I want to give you a few examples of things that are conserved um, because it is my belief that um, conservation reasoning is actually very familiar and we use this all the time. It can just seem kind of foreign when we're um, studying a concept like momentum that is a little more abstract. So um, some examples are, for instance, money. So money is conserved in ordinary transactions. Okay, and we use conservation reasoning to think about money. So for example, if your bank account has less money than you expect at the end of the month, you might ask a question like, where did that money go? Perhaps you had a bill that automatically paid that you forgot about. Perhaps you bought something with your debit card that you forgot about. Maybe you have a spouse who has access to your bank account and you accuse them of spending money that you didn't expect. Um, but you are confident that that money went somewhere. It didn't just disappear, you know, it went somewhere. Um, another question that we ask is, um, how are you going to pay for something? So again, um, we tend to think of money having to come from somewhere. Um, we can't just pay for things without having the ability to do that. We need to have the money come in from somewhere in order for it to go somewhere. Um, so those are ordinary transactions, but not everything is an ordinary transaction. So um, this is where those conditions come in. So if we do something that's not an ordinary transaction, then the amount of money is not conserved. So for instance, if I burn a dollar bill, then the dollar is destroyed. Um, it doesn't go somewhere. It didn't um, you know, become a different form of money. It just vanished. Okay? And that's okay under my claim about money being conserved in ordinary transactions because that's not an ordinary transaction. Another non-ordinary transaction is when the government prints money. Okay, So that creates money out of thin air. Um, the money didn't exist before, and then it does. So that is um, another way that we can get around money being conserved because that's not an ordinary transaction. If you go on to take economics classes, there may be some details here. Um, you know, sometimes we consider banks creating money and so on, but the, ba the basic idea is true. Um, ordinarily, we think of money being conserved. Okay, another one is in chemistry. Um, so atoms are conserved in chemical reactions. Okay, um, and what that means is that if we have some atoms that appeared to disappear, they didn't actually disappear. They must have gone somewhere. So for instance, if I burn a candle, Based on knowing that atoms are conserved in chemical reactions, I know that I must have created some amount of gases from that candle. Um, the mass of the candle didn't just go away, it became carbon dioxide and water and maybe some other stuff. Okay, if you didn't know that atoms were conserved in chemical reactions, you might think that they just vanished. Um, another example like this is if you lose weight, um, then that mass must have gone somewhere, those atoms went somewhere. Um, in that case, we probably breathe most of them out as your body metabolizes the fat, um, the, it becomes carbon dioxide and water that we breathe out. Um, or if you consider burning gasoline in a car, um, that doesn't just go away. All of that becomes carbon dioxide and water and maybe some other pollutants that um, go out into the atmosphere. If you didn't have this model, then you might think that that um, gasoline just vanished. Um, but again, we have some conditions. So what was the condition that we're considering chemical reactions? So um, not a chemical reaction would be, for instance, a uranium atom splitting. Um, so when this happens, we lose a uranium atom and um, two or more other types of atoms are created. So that's not a chemical reaction, so that's fine. We're allowed to have um, atoms disappear and new atoms um, be formed in reactions that are not chemical reactions. Okay, so I think it can also be helpful to give you an example of something that is not conserved. So here's a non-example. Um, volume. So volume is not conserved in mixing. Um, so for example, if you take one liter of water and um, you add to it one liter of alcohol um, and you mix those together, um, you'll end up with a little less than two liters. Um, I don't know the exact amount, but let's say 1.98 liters of the water alcohol solution. Okay, why is this true? Well, it turns out that the water molecules can fit in between the alcohol molecules. And so um, you end up with just a slightly denser solution afterward than what you would have expected. This is actually one of the pieces of evidence for atoms being real, if you think about it. The only reason why um, this would happen is if the two types of uh, materials are made out of different things. If you're imagining just continuous fluids with no atoms, then I think you would have a hard time explaining why they wouldn't add up to two liters when you mix them together. Okay, so one of the things that um, is kind of interesting about conservation is that we can make pretty much anything conserved if we consider strict enough um, rules for the conditions. So, you know, under normal circumstances, I would say that like the amount of wood is not conserved. You can destroy wood easily. You can create new wood um, by planting a tree, for instance, or cutting down the tree, depending on what you count. Um, but if you were running, say, a hardware store, um, then the amount of wood that's in your store should be conserved. You have some that comes in when you buy some wood. You have some that goes out when you sell it. But under those ordinary transactions, the amount of wood should stay constant. Um, or if you have some object in your house that you own and it goes missing, you know it should be somewhere. It doesn't just disappear because you expect the number of those objects to be conserved under normal conditions. So uh, pretty much anything can be conserved if we have strict enough conditions. Um, the thing that's really interesting is coming up with the conditions that are true in a particular problem and lead to a useful conservation result.